In the global fight against climate change, finding alternative energy sources remains a challenge. Greater still is finding options that are economical. But perhaps Professor Stuart Licht of George Washington University is onto something. Up next, Licht joins us to discuss his new system that pulls greenhouse gases from the atmosphere and converts them into valuable products. Reporter Andrea Vasquez has the interview via Google Hangout. And Stuart Licht, thank you so much for joining us. Can you tell me what are some of the ways to capture carbon from the atmosphere? We're still learning a lot about how to capture carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Uh, many of the attempts that have been tried don't seem to uh, make uh, economic sense or and they haven't been very successful. Uh, people have tried to blow uh, CO2 back into the earth with or without water or bubble it into the oceans, uh, um, neither of which looks too much too promising at, at this point economically. They're trying to extract it from some industrial processes before it leaves into the atmosphere, concentrating it first. Um, and again, these processes uh, to date haven't been very promising. Uh, we, we've taken a very different approach. So tell me about your process, the STEP process, and how that works. The STEP process can remove carbon dioxide directly from the atmosphere. It can also remove it from industrial uh, smokestacks. And it's, it's a different approach. It takes a new chemistry. But what we do is we use uh, sunlight, solar energy, the full solar spectrum, uh, and we apply it to bubbling the CO2 uh, for the air uh, into a, a, a chamber called an electrolysis chamber. We bubble it in there and we transform the CO2. We don't try to really just capture it. We transform it into something useful, a valuable product. We add some electricity and that transforms it into something called carbon nan nanofibers. Carbon nanofibers are very stable, super strong material with very, very uh, exciting uh, uses. The idea of making a valuable product out of this uh, greenhouse gas is very exciting. What are some of the products that you can make from carbon nanofibers? Carbon nanofibers have uh, truly astounding properties. They're much stronger than steel. They have very high electrical conductivity and thermal conductivity. They're being used for the uh, composites in the wind turbines uh, for renewable energy. Uh, we know them uh, in lightweight sports equipment. Uh, because we make the carbon composites are very, very lightweight, but strong and flexible material. Okay. They use them in the Boeing Dreamliner now. So instead of having a, a heavier metal, they can make much lighter weight planes, but much stronger, uh, uh, which can go further because they don't weigh as much. Uh, finally, one fantastic application is a, a whole new material for batteries. And so they're hoping that the next generation of uh, batteries for cars and for vehicles can hold much more energy that would be based on carbon nanofibers. And how are we getting carbon nanofibers or creating them now? That's the one uh, uh, difficulty right now is they're so expensive. Uh, carbon nanofibers are made by uh, one of two processes. One, they sort of pull it strand by strand of polymer or plastic, and then they burn off all the non-carbon nanofiber material, end up with a strand of it, and then they weave these strand by strand to try to build up a carbon nanofiber cloth. Uh, the other method is equally uh, expensive, fancy chemical term called chemical vapor deposition. Under this process, they can slowly grow carbon nanofibers. Again, very energy intensive uh, and very, very expensive. And another big issue is always scaling up to meet the demand, which is huge. Can your step process be scaled up to meet the demand? Simply, you take this molten liquid, this liquid, and you put two electrodes in it, they're inexpensive electrodes, one's made out of steel, one's made out of nickel. And you apply some electricity under the right conditions with the right uh, liquid in there. CO2 beautifully dissolves in there and we grow these carbon nanofibers. When we scale that up in the lab more than 100 times, there's no change. So we think we can scale up to uh, a large systems uh, very easily. The other question on the other side is, do we need all these carbon nanofibers? Do we need them enough of them so that we can actually uh, affect the amount, the concentration of carbon dioxide in, in the atmosphere? Will we have enough to do with it all? We're at the beginning of the carbon nanofiber revolution. We're sort of where plastics were uh, at the beginning of World War II, where there's these wonderful new materials, they're still a little bit expensive, when the price came down, their uses took off. And today, we consume several pounds of plastics per person per day. Um, 
if, if you can imagine a transition where we start really using these materials instead of having the steel cords in cement beams, which they build with, if we replace those steel cords with carbon nanofibers, that's a big use of them. If we can use them as building materials, if we can use them in all these other applications, pretty soon there's a possibility we could see uh, a few pounds uh, per year per person. At that point, we're really cutting into the CO2 in the air. I appreciate you joining us. Okay, thank you for your interest. To learn more about how scientists are working to combat climate change, follow our blog at SciTechNow.org and SciTechNow.tumblr.com.